Hey, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. I'm glad that you joined us. I want to apologize for the way that I'm looking right now. Because of an error on my part, I forgot that I was supposed to be speaking this morning. And whenever the camera crew came in and Grace started to film, I put these clothes on because we're moving stuff and taking down Christmas. I always hate whenever the lights go away, don't you? At the beginning of November, we put our Christmas lights up earlier than we ever had before. Our house was illuminated with almost 5,000 Christmas lights. I love the Christmas lights. I love the season. In fact, I, I always do, in the cul-de-sac, I do a one around when I pull into our house because I like to see the full view of the lights on our house. And there's something disappointing about taking the lights down from your house, perhaps taking the Christmas tree uh, away. Brianna was telling me yesterday about a date in January, the third Monday in January. You've heard of Black Friday or you've heard of uh, um, Cyber Monday. There's a day that's gaining momentum in our nomenclature of our culture. It's called Blue Monday when people get their credit card receipts and there's no Christmas and there's no, uh, the presents are broken or whatever's happening and you're finding that the depression and the coldness of winter is falling in because the light is gone. There's no more Christmas music on. It's just back to normal. The Bible talks about us being the light of the world. And in this, the final uh, message from Liberty Baptist Church through 2020, I want to remind us what our theme throughout the entire year was. If you have your Bibles, would you open them up to Matthew chapter 5? In Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 14, when that sadness is taken away, that the light is gone, we're reminded about this in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, where the Bible says, Ye are the light of the world. There's something fascinating that God relates to our experience here on earth. He gives us purpose. He defines the opportunities available for us as Christians here in this world. He says, you and me, if you know Christ as your Savior, if you know Christ as your Savior, you are the light of the world. I think that's fascinating. I was thinking about this in a, in a world that is broken, a world that is full of sin, in a world where we have sickness, where we have death, where we have anger, where we have so much. God stepped in, and when the angels spoke, they said, joy to the world, peace on earth, and goodwill towards man. How could all of those things come to pass? Those things came to pass because Christ had come. And so a world that had for thousands of years been groped with darkness and sadness and sorrow, there was a hope, there was a light. Why? Because Jesus was coming. So we spent a, an entire month, and some, some of you more, singing about the joy that was coming to the world, the heralded the herald that the angels sang about, all of those great things came because light had come. And Jesus, through his life, says, okay, I'm leaving now. But he tells us that you and I are the light of the world. That's a fascinating truth. That as we're taking down Christmas lights and as we're storing away 2020, there's a valuable reminder that you and I are the light of the world. He continues, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You just can't stop. You cannot not be a Christian. You have a light. Verse 15 says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. And then he says in verse number 16, he says, you are the light of the world. In verse number 16, God says this, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Can I share with you three thoughts and our time will be finished. Number one, there is a human responsibility to our light. God's done everything necessary to put inside of you and put inside of me the equipment necessary to shine forth. There's no fuel that is needed. There is no uh, wick that needs to be trimmed. There is nothing. Your light is shining before man. So God says, you have a light. It's inside of you. It just has to be, it has to be shown. It has to be released. It has to be uh, demonstrated. 
you and I have a responsibility because the Bible says here in verse number 15, you don't take a candle and light a candle so that you could cover it up. That makes no sense. You don't cover up a candle. You don't cover up that which is inside of you. God has placed inside of us his Holy Spirit. He's given us his word. He's given us his church. And with his Holy Spirit, his word, the church, we are equipped. There is a light with inside of us. But what's amazing is that God says we can hinder, we can hamper that light from going forward. You ever been there? Have you allowed your light to become dim? Have you allowed the shining that should be coming from you to just be covered up? It doesn't mean it's not there because no man can lose their salvation. When a person is saved, they're saved and they're saved forever. But we can hide our light. I have a friend named Jared who said that much of his Christianity until he he grew mature and he started living by faith, he tried to operate as a secret service Christian. Isn't that an interesting thought? That I want that salvation, I want that assurance, but I want to keep it quiet. See, God's called us to shine as a light. God's called us not only to shine as a light, but he tells us how to shine as a light. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to shine. Number two, he tells us how. He says that they, this would be the lost people, the people in the world, that they may see your good works. Huh. See, you and I, the reason we do works is for a very simple purpose, to show that we know Christ. We don't do good work so that if I do this, maybe you'll get this for me, or if, if I do this, maybe you'll help me out in this area. The Bible says that we do good works because that's how we shine. Let your light so shine before men, the Bible says, that they may see your good works. The reason a Christian participates in good works, the reason we might follow the Ten Commandments, or we would be kind to a neighbor, or we would help an old lady cross the street, or we put the shopping cart back in the designated stall rather than just letting it wander through the Walmart parking lot into oblivion. The reason we do good works is because that's how we shine. When we give money, when we uh, share our house, when we invite somebody to a meal, when we are giving of ourselves, when we're demonstrating a good work, the good work is the way that we shine, according to this verse. So if we are not involved with good works, if our motives are self-centered or introspective, if we have not given of ourselves, if we are not doing good works, if we're in that place, then the Bible says we're not shining. So God gives us a mandate to do good works. What's a good work on this, the last time our church is meeting together. What is a good work, a resolution that you can put in your life that says this is something that should become a habit, a part of my life, a way that I live, a good work I should do. Men see our good works. That demonstrates another thing, that our Christianity is not passive, it is active. When our Christianity is based upon, oh, I go here, or I um, I live in this manner. If it's passive, no, the Bible shows us that Christianity is an active thing. When I was in, in uh, school, I was taught the difference between passive verbs and action verbs. A passive verb is am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been. These are passive. I am tired. I uh, was uh, sleeping. I uh, I, uh, they be, or we be, or uh, there is. These are all passive verbs. There's not a whole lot of action. My grammar teacher in college said, never use passive words. Use active words, like I ran. Instead of I was running, I ran. The idea is it's action, it's exciting when you read it. It gives motive, it gives power, it gives enthusiasm, it gives energy. Don't be passive in your writing. This was something I was encouraged as a freshman in college to, re to remember in my writing. I think a lot of Christians, we are content to live 
in the passive. I used to, I was, I have been. And God says that we should be active. Why? Because men see our good works. What good works are you showing? Sometimes that's a smile. Sometimes that's sharing an invite to church. Sometimes that's helping somebody when they're struggling, opening a door, being aware of the surroundings, showing up on time to work. I am active. An active Christianity. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. May our good works. And then the Bible says this, number three, because it's not about you and it's not about me. The Bible says that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. Because you really don't have a lot to offer people. I don't have a lot to offer people. From time to time, as a, a sports fan, I've heard about people who will talk about a rookie or somebody in college, perhaps going into the pros, and saying they have a lot of upside. Right now they're at this level, but we could really see them scaling and being something big or important. You know what the truth is? You and I don't have a lot to offer people, but God has everything to offer people. He offers salvation. He offers purpose in life. He changes our present circumstances from that of a meaningless existence to a life full of hope, purpose, energy. Because why? We're glorifying our Father, which is in heaven. God wants you and I to show good works so that we're shining for his kingdom. But at the end of the day, it's not about you and me. We, people should not just know us as nice people. They should know that we serve the God of the universe whose name is Jesus Christ. He's the one who died on a cross for our sins. He's the one who was buried. He's the one who rose again. And he's the one to whom all glory belongs. You and I deserve nothing but hell, but God in his goodness gave his son Jesus. And when we are using our good works, not for our own purposes, not to get a free this or not to get a complimentary or try to get an upgrade or a free whatever but to bring glory to our father which is in heaven we've made an eternal difference because when someone trusts christ as their savior that's something that is celebrated not in 2020 not in 2021 but it's something that is celebrated 100 years from now and there will be very few things that you will care about 100 years from now but anything that has to do with this book and our savior will make a big, big impact a hundred years from now. Let your light so shine before men that they say, may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven tonight and tomorrow. And as you look at Friday and Saturday, a new year, what good works will you do to shine as a light that brings glory to your Father, which is in heaven? Would you join me for prayer? Father, tonight we take time just to remind ourselves that you've given us a life of purpose, that our existence has value and meaning, and it's intended to shine as a light for you, so that when people see our lives, they see you. Challenge us with that thought. I pray that you'd be with us as a church, be with our country, give healing, and I pray that you would use us to shine as lights for you. In this new year, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for being part of our Wednesday night services. I want to thank you for being part of this church. This year has been unlike any other, but I'm just so impressed with what God has done through you and through this, his church. If we can be a help to you in any way, please reach out to us here at the church. Call 702-647-4522, or you can email at info at Experience Liberty. We want to encourage you to be what God wants you to be by faith in 2021. It's your giving that makes this ministry uh, uh, possible and available to so many. I appreciate your giving. And you can continue to give at experienceliberty.com. You'll see the backslash for the giving portal there. We wanna encourage you with what God's doing through your ministry. You make a difference. I look forward to seeing you on campus. This Sunday, we have services at eight at 9.45, 11.30 in our Spanish ministry at 1.15.
This Sunday evening, we'll be doing something special. We'll be installing Ezekiel Ruiz as the pastor of our Spanish ministry. It'll be a special night. That service starts at five o'clock. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks again for watching. God bless.